Hello everyone, I am Hayden and in this video I'll be giving you a review of all my courses that I've taken in first year as a UBC Solder student. Here are the courses that I'll be reviewing today and just a little note uh, because I am a business and computer science student, the last three courses are actually not mandatory for all other specializations. So do keep that in mind when you're looking at this list. So let's start off with COM 101, Business Fundamentals. For this course, I give it a B rating. I feel like in general, this course has decently easy concepts, although very important concepts for general purposes, but very annoying projects because you have to actually do group projects and a very long group project at that. And one of the good things about this course is that it touches on every specialization in the program, from marketing all the way to accounting and everything in between. This course, similar to many other commerce courses in first year, all have a lot of prep work that you're meant to do before each class. Now, I'm a very lazy person, and so I don't really do that. <laughs> Instead, um, they uh, for this course, they have a thing called prep quizzes, that is meant to test your understanding on the topic. So you're meant to read the prep and then do the prep quiz. Well, for me, I just do the prep quiz and then I just keep doing it. I do it like five times in a row to make sure I understand those key concepts. And then I'm like, okay, good enough. And I actually go into the lecture with that knowledge. And usually that is already enough for me, at least to understand most of the concepts. So yeah, that's definitely worked out for me because I was actually able to understand all the concepts and most importantly, I didn't waste hours of my life just reading. This course definitely does not need to take any notes for it. There's all the slides are posted for you and there's activities and clickers in class, but those are very easy as long as you have done the prep work. Now the really big project that I talked about is the term long project where you, as a group of I think five people, you have to do a business analysis. In many ways, it's actually really similar to the work that a normal consultant would do. So you would have to analyze the business and then provide some recommendations and at the very end you have to do a Q&A with the professors. And so that was a very interesting project for me. I don't think I particularly enjoyed it per se, but it was definitely interesting to do though. And in addition to that term long project, there's also three case analysis that you have to do individually. And so those basically use very similar skills to consulting again. Once again, just analyze the business and then give some recommendations. All right, next up is COM 105, Values, Ethics, and Community. For this course, I will give it a C rating. Now I'm giving a C rating, not necessarily because it's very hard. It's more that it's just kind of boring and it doesn't really, you know, doesn't interest me in any way. Now there are three sections as the name implies, one for values, one for ethics, one for community in that order. <laughs> and each of the sections have a professor. Values is all about discovering yourself, you know, finding out what is important to you, setting goals and then establishing habits to support those goals. For ethics, there is the main component of another case study. Uh, for my year, it was uh, with Fiber LNG. I'm not sure if they changed it over the years, perhaps they have, but it's just, again, it's just a case study, not nothing special. And lastly, there's community where they basically have you identify possible career paths for yourself and ways to get to that career path, as well as having you set up your LinkedIn, do some connection stuff, etc. So overall, I feel like this is a very hit or miss course. I have definitely met people that said that this was their favorite course in solder. Personally, it doesn't really hit me nearly as hard as that. But overall, still not a very bad course. C. Next up, we have COM 192 management and organizational behavior. I list this course as a B. Now the thing with this course, right? I love the content. I also love the professor. Uh, the professor I got is Kevin Lee. I love this guy so much. He's a great professor. And I also really like the course content. It's so great. Like the content is actually really interesting to me. But the problem is the mark that I got was so frustrating, right? It is the lowest mark of all of my first year courses. So if you're a very mark oriented person, you might not enjoy this course as much. But overall for me, I feel like even though I am a pretty mark oriented person and I am pretty frustrated by my mark, if it wasn't for the mark, I would have given this course an A. But still the course content and the professor, very solid and so still a B rating. So this course touches on a lot of different OBHR topics such as stress and motivation, the decision-making process, 
communication, leadership, etc. And for the assignments part, I believe it actually differs between professors. But for my professor, we had three quizzes totaling for 30% in total. And then the rest of the marks were separated by a 2000 word essay as well as a group, a 15 minute group presentation. All right, on to the next course, which is COM 196 Business Communication 1. Uh, yeah, I know, I hated this course. <laughs> Full transparency, I'm a very non-literate person. Uh, so anytime you need me to write things, I get annoyed. And this is a writing course. So inherently it's gonna be, there's a lot of writing and some presentations as well. And quite simply, presentations I'm fine with, but writing, there's so much writing and it's just not my type of thing. And so I would rate this course a D. So yeah, for the assignments for this course, it is a lot of writing and this, as well as some presentations as well. And for the presentations, some of them are in group sessions, some of them are individual. But overall, I can't really say what I learned from this course. I don't even feel like we necessarily learn anything about communication. It is more just they gave us a chance to practice our communication skills, which don't get me wrong, I do think is important. And I, I can see why this course is part of the curriculum. It's just that I can't say it's an enjoyable course. All right, so that's all the commerce courses. Now let's jump into the econ courses. First econ course over here is Econ 101, Principle of Microeconomics. I thought this course was actually pretty good. I rated an A course and it was one of my favorite courses in first year. It is not that hard realistically and really I thought the topics were pretty easy to handle. Topics that were touched on included like supply and demand, elasticity, externalities, stuff like that. And I also really enjoyed the professor at Clive Chapel. I thought he was a really really good professor and that made the course just that much better. Alright the other econ course here is econ 102 principles of macroeconomics. This one I rated as a B. Honestly, the difficulty wise is pretty similar to 101 microeconomics. It's just that because the professor that I got wasn't nearly as good as Clive Chapel, so I thought that this course I enjoyed it less. Topics touched on include the GDP, unemployment, economic growth, savings and investments, aggregated demand and supply, and then fiscal and monetary policies. So again, difficulty pretty similar to microeconomics, but just because of the professor you got a little marks deducted on that one. But the course itself is not that hard. There is mostly just both Econ 101 and 102. The marking scheme is basically the same. It is just, you know, like a little bit on the assignments. I honestly forgot how much. And the rest of the marks is just distributed between the midterm and the final exam. Now let's transition over to the math courses. First off, let's start off with Math 100, which is Differential Calculus with Applications. Uh, yeah, no, I hated this course once again. <laughs> I rated this course as a D uh, because quite frankly, Personally, I'm terrible at math, man. And I thought this course was really, really hard. And just to give you some context, I got like 98% in high school calculus, okay? So it's not like I didn't take calculus or I've never learned it before. No, I have, I have learned it before. It's just still ridiculously hard. Topics touched on includes like derivatives, limits, phase diagrams, approximations, stuff like that. And if you want to get a good grade on this course, I would say assignments are key because assignments is one of the few things you can actually control in this course. And there's a decent amount of course mark hinging on those assignment marks. So definitely try to get good teammates for those. I personally can definitely say I got carried by my teammates on those assignments. And I know that this course actually changed since I took it, right? When I took it, there was actually no midterms. And then there was only the final exam that were worth 50%. But nowadays, it's actually, there's a midterm and there's a final exam. I forgot what the exact like distribution of the marks is, but you know, you have midterms again. So uh, good luck with those guys. Uh, Cause uh, yeah, no, I, I've heard people literally fail it with spectacular marks. And similarly for the other math course, Math 101 Integral Calculus with Applications. You know, same story, I'm not gonna lie. It's still a damn D because it is still really freaking hard. I would argue it's actually even harder than Math 100. You learn stuff such as like the fundamental theorem of calculus, definite and indefinite integrals, Taylor series, power series, conversions, divergence, stuff like that. And whatever I said about assignments and the midterms finals, whatever I said about those about Math 100, 
exact same thing over here at Math 101 as well. It's basically like the, again, the marking scheme is very similar between the two courses. So the difficulty part also translated from one course to the other. Overall, not a very enjoyable course. I did not enjoy it at all, quite frankly. It was really hard and I don't think it really helped me in other future courses. And finally, I got the two computer science courses that are box exclusive. I forgot to mention this, but the Math 101 course is also box exclusive. If you're not in box, you don't actually need to take it. Good for you guys. Uh, but for the CS courses, is also box exclusive. So the first course I'm going to talk about regarding CS is definitely Computer Science 110. Official name for this course is called Computations, Programs, and Programming. Don't ask me what the hell that means. I have no idea. I don't know why they named it so bad. The worst part about this course is that name. Honestly, that is a terrible name. Really, it should just be called Intro to Programming. Like, that's literally what it is. But anyways, I rate it as an A because honestly, I think it's a very good introduction course to programming. I have a lot of friends that have never programmed ever in their life and they took this course and they were able to learn a lot about the fundamentals of programming and actually do decent. The one weird thing about this course is that it uses a language called Racket. I believe they just use it because it is a, firstly, it's a learning language, it's a, it's a language used to learn coding. But also the fact that they don't want you to come in with existing knowledge so that it that the course becomes significantly easier for you. For this course, it requires so much work, like a ridiculous amount of work. I feel like it is roughly double the amount of workload compared to a normal commerce course. However, the amount of stuff you learn is also ridiculously large, right? You learn so much in such a short amount of time, in like four months, you learn so much that I think is definitely very impressive. So what is the topic that you touch on? So for example, you touch on uh, natural recursions, mutual recursions, search trees, abstractions, graphs, backtracking search and graphs, stuff like that. And yeah, as I said previously, there's a lot of work that needs to be done, be it the problem sets that you have to do every week or the labs that you have to do every week. All of them are pretty hard, at least like for labs, you get like TAs to help you, but for, for problem sets, Unless you go into like office hours to get help, otherwise you're kind of on your own. So those are definitely one of the harder parts about the course. And the exam is also not that easy, you know, good luck on that one. And also this course also has the most extreme grade distribution I've ever seen. Basically for this course, if you look at the graph, it is basically either you fail or you ace it. I know a few people that actually did fail it, I hope that is not you. And finally, the last course I have to talk about today is ComSci 121, Models of Computations. I rate this course a B. You learn about stuff like logic gates, circuit breadboard, mathematical induction proofs, like you know, like weak induction, strong induction, as well as like big O. And overall, I feel like these concepts are pretty important to learn just because they actually come back in later courses if you are in the box program. You know, like stuff like in ComSci 221, big O comebacks in a, in a major, major way. And I believe, I haven't taken it yet, but I've heard that the mathematical proofs come back in 320, which is, I do not look forward to that. I haven't taken it yet, but I hate those damn proofs. So overall, it's a definitely challenging course, and it is definitely not an easy course in any way, and there's definitely a lot of work that is required for this course, but at least I would say it is a useful course for future content. You're kind of suffering so that you're able to actually do the courses in the future. But that's basically all the courses that I took as a first year at UBC Solder. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. I'm sure you did. You watched all the way until the end, right? So if you did, be sure to check out these other UBC related videos that I've made. And thank you for watching all the way until the end and I'll see you over there.